confirm and go live. All righty then. Hello, everyone. And welcome to another episode of our Glacier Ridge campaign. See, now we're five episodes in, I think. I think I just wrote five. Five episodes in, and I'm saying Glacier Ridge instead of Shattered Earth. So I think we're good. <clears throat> anyway, uh, welcome back. This is our fifth episode, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I don't keep track of these things. And um, this is our Monster of the Week campaign. Now, uh, I will break down quickly a little bit of what Monster of the Week is because not everybody knows what Monster of the Week is. So Monster of the Week is a other TTRPG, tabletop RPG, written by Michael Sands. And what Monster of the Week is, is it's based on other Monster of the Week TV series type of thing. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Dresden Files, X-Files... Uh, supernatural all of those ones so play, people come in there's a monster in the town they fight the monster they leave um, this one again might not be that exact way because maybe the monsters are around for a couple weeks before they leave anyway um, right now we have three players but we're gonna get two more um, in a little bit here um, so this campaign is called the Glacier Ridge campaign because that's where the campaign takes place. Glacier Ridge is a fictional town in the Northwest Territories, uh, right off the Nahani Valley, about a two hour hike away. Um, closest town to it would be Fort Simpson, but again, fictional town doesn't really matter where it is. Uh, we chose, well, I chose the Northwest Territories, specifically Nahani Valley, just because of the weird things that have happened there and do happen there, apparently, allegedly. Um, but basically, uh, if you Google Valley of the Headless Men, you'll understand why we picked the area, why I picked the area, just because it, it feel, felt right. Um, anyway, so... What happened last week, you might be wondering. Why are you streaming again? Um, well, that second part of the question was a little mean, but I'll answer the first part. Um, so, last week, the party uh, woke up in the morning feeling refreshed. Kind of creeped out a little bit because they saw a weird bony hand handprint on the window in frost. Um... Everybody woke up early, headed downstairs. Wyatt was on a mission to charge out the door. Um, this also took place at the start of last week, is we had an interview with our newest crew member, which is Oliver. Um, Oliver is going to be another researcher and analyst. He is also playing the Flake character uh, playbook in the Monster of the Week if you know what that is. Um, and yeah, he's going to be a fun character to have around, I think. Uh, so, they woke up in the morning. Uh, Tom had a breakfast laid out by Evelyn. Um, everybody had a quick bite to eat. And Wyatt stormed out the door because he wanted to find these tracks. Because uh, Finn had told him that these tracks would be somewhere in the world. Uh, so he went out and started searching for it himself. Uh, on top of that, there is um, a little bit of information that happened in those talks before they went out, but not too important. Uh, a few of them, I can't remember exactly who, but a few of them went into uh, where they saw the eyes in the window at the pub, and they started searching around. Well, Wyatt and I believe Victor went to the park. Uh, Wyatt and Victor saw movement uh, heading into the trees, so they immediately rushed in after it. Uh, whereas the rest of the crew who was searching by the window found an icy trail heading uh, north on one of the streets. 
from the window heading north, which they found it was a little bit confusing because the lodge is south, which is they saw eyes at the bar and then they saw the handprint on the window, but the directions weren't lining up. Anyway, so uh, they started following that trail and then we flipped back to Wyatt and Victor who came face to face with a black bear in the woods and lost the camera. Um, then they ran out of the woods, Charlie, and came across the other crew. Charlie ran into the woods to see if the bear was still... Actually, I don't know if you ran into the woods. You kind of ran into like the outskirts of the woods looking around, right? Charlie? What? Not paying attention? I was doing a combination of things. <laughs> I said you didn't run into the woods, you just kind of ran to the outskirts and looked in, correct? When you were yeah. chasing after the bear? Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, so there was no sign of the bear, um, but they continued following the tracks. The tracks took them past the Glacier Ridge Wellness Center, um, and they went into the woods from there. Uh, they followed the tracks until it led them to a cave. Inside the cave, things got very, very cold. They followed uh, down through the cave. They came across a corridor. And when they came across this corridor, it got even colder. And then they saw something appear at the end of the corridor. An eight-foot-tall humanoid-like creature with translucent icy skin and blood-red eyes staring back at them. Um, it started to approach them, started to put some of their lights out. Um, and then it disappeared. Then, uh, at the back of the party was Frankie, as we decided at th in the moment. <laughs> uh, uh, and they heard something appear behind them, uh, and immediately swung their axe. <laughs> it was an axe, right? No. Yeah, you have the axe. Yeah, oh, Victor yeah. has the sword. Um, <laughs> so you swing and you hit this creature. Uh, it takes a step back and then starts lunging towards the group, which then leads to, I think, Oliver shooting at it a bunch uh, and then getting pinned to the ground by said creature. Um, I gotta say, I love that one of the protectors, thinking we're out here to protect from, like, vagrants, go-to weapon is a sword. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Don't have to reload a sword. I mean, fair. Um... You can use it as blunt force trauma as well. You gotta just spin it to its side. Um, it's versatile. Yeah. So, uh, Oliver gets pinned to the ground. Uh, Frankie escapes. Um, Very I believe, coolly, I might add. Yeah, on mm -hmm. sliding on their stomach on a longboard out, out underneath the monster uh, as the monster was running at them. Um... And then uh, Wyatt tried sneaking out. The monster grabbed onto the teddy bear. But then the monster also got kicked in the face. And uh, it tried grabbing Maxine and charging into the cave. Where uh, at that point, uh, Charlie did his job for once. And <laughs> inter intercepted this. And the monster switched targets and targeted Charlie instead of Maxine took Charlie way deeper into the cave. Uh, everybody got out after that, but then they were like, well, we can't leave Charlie behind, but I mean, technically they could. Uh, <laughs> so they ended up going into the cave. I think it was uh, Frankie and Victor who went inside, correct? Yeah, so they went inside and Char <laughs> Charlie was captured in a pile of ice that was slowly growing up his body. Uh, when they came across Charlie, um, they, uh, I think the ice at that point was up to like your belly area. Um, uh, doesn't chest, I believe. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. It started getting higher and higher while they were there. So, uh, Frankie thought it was a great idea to swing an ax at, uh, the ice and totally, <laughs> totally was accurate the entire time. Uh, didn't jab <laughs> jab okay. charlie in the arm oh sorry yeah it charlie all according to plan 
Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, Charlie had frostbite, and they ended up leaving the forest with this new information. Um, they went to the Glacier Ridge Wellness Center, which I think Charlie and Oliver were the only... Oh yeah, Oliver got bit by the monster as well. Uh, yeah. But yeah, they got fixed up a little bit, Charlie and uh, Oliver, because they were damaged pretty good. Uh, Does Charlie that completely get rid of all our wounds? No. It gets okay. it drops it down by I'll allow two because you guys were pretty high, so you're down to one now. Okay. Yep. So then will the last one essentially just be gone after our next sleep? Yeah, once you go to bed. Okay. So just to recap, uh Charlie and Oliver were at three. Now they're down to one because they went to a hospital or clinic. Uh Frankie though is still at two because she or they went to the hotel, the lodge, somewhere. Yeah. They went to get a coffee, I think. Um, after that, they decided to do some internet research and figure out what's going on. Uh, they came across a couple of articles, uh, and now they are searching for a couple of people. Uh, one is let me just pull the name Hold up on, here. I got you. you got me um we are looking for dr elias redwood mm -hmm. who wrote a bunch of stuff about cryokinesis and we're also looking for his partner dr rachel thornton who's been missing for a year and a half and i think we're also looking for her sister eliza yeah uh, I don't know. I got the name, but I don't know if we're looking for her. Uh, you were also told that uh, for some reason at the end of the game, you were also thinking about going to talk to Edmund as well. Yes. And I'm not 100% sure why, but that was mentioned. Um, something else uh, for Frankie. I completely forgot this. Um... Maxine was looking into the cryokinesis, uh, but Frankie was looking into the shadow stuff. Uh, the shadow realm. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much everything we need to know. Um, unless you guys think I missed anything. It was very thorough. Cool. I think I could have done better. <laughs> okay, you can do the oh, next one. Shut up, Charlie. You Nobody can do the next you. one. <laughs> okay, let me find out the status for our next our other two players. Um. Also, I cannot guarantee if the coffee that I got was 100% just coffee. Because it's early, and I got stabbed by ice. You were taking the coffee from my room, were you? You know, the Irish have some brilliant ideas. <laughs> That's not the coffee from your room, then. <laughs> good. All over. Good. There is nothing Irish about my coffee. More Colombian. Um, all right. What are your guys' plans for the day? So we went to bed? No. Or... no Day's barely not. started. It's like 9 a.m. We went to bed. <laughs> oh, so, okay, yeah. So it's only been Because like you woke up at 5 a.m. That's right. You woke up at 5 a.m. and went into the woods. Yeah, and now... We've been awake for four hours now. Okay. Okay, Oliver has just been sitting there like all twitchy eyed and you can see like the uh the the formulas and the math all working out and he's gonna try to connect the dots a bit this morning that is a nine so i get to hold one i believe all right you want to explain to people what that is all right so with connect the dots my character being a data analyst um, I look for the wider patterns that current events might be part of. So you roll a sharp 
and on a 10 plus you hold three and on a seven to nine you hold one and so anytime during this mystery i can ask the keeper one of these questions is yeah. this person connected to current events uh, more than they are saying when and where will the next critical event occur what does the monster want from this person is this connected to previous mysteries we have investigated or how does this mystery connect to the bigger picture so cool i have connect yeah i have drawn many conclusions but answers still need to be made okay so make sure you are aware that you have one available i'll remember because you rolled you rolled an eight right or nine I rolled a nine. Oh no! I get plus two, so I rolled an eleven. Okay, so you I'm get three. holding three. <laughs> oh, uh, little uh, disclaimer here: we messed up, or I messed up, in the last game. Advanced rolls don't happen until you've taken the level ups that unlock the advanced section. So the advanced improvements, if you look at them. Um, you get to mark two of the basic moves as advanced. Uh, After you can you've do leveled up five times. You yeah. qualify for advanced improvements. Yeah. So you have two of those advanced improvements that you can mark two basic moves as advanced. So when I, it only happened twice and it was both times it was protect someone. Um, actually, no, it only happened once and it was during protect somebody, but, um, because the other protect someone definitely did not get you out of danger, Charlie. <laughs> um, oh, so that's the rolling 12 plus. Yes. So you unlock those once you level that up. So just for future and you reference. you only ever unlock two of them. No, you can unlock four, according to, or at least the flake can. Because there's oh, on the flake, I... mark two of the basic moves in advanced, and then another advanced improvement is mark another two of the basic moves in advanced. <sighs> So yeah, I only four have total. one. Okay. Yeah, everybody's different, right? Every playbook's different. Oh, so. right. This game has luck points. Yeah. It does. But just be careful with those. So you get seven luck points for the entire campaign. That you They can... don't recharge. Yeah, they don't recharge. They're an instant success. And if you run out, the DM can essentially do... Or the game... I don't know what they're called here. The Keeper. keeper. The keeper can do what essentially whatever they want to you because you can never save yourself with luck. Not necessarily whatever they want, but it does say that you're doomed, which is open to interpretation. You're doomed. doomed. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, so um, going into it, uh, like I said, I completely forgot about this, and I apologize, uh, Frankie. Um, you were looking into articles yourself about um, the Shadow Realm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? I do. Okay. So again, Vaguely, but I remember it. I apologize, but here's your article. Um, so you spend some time searching around the internet, uh, looking at the Google machine and different things. And you come across I'm sorry, the Google machine, the Google machine, Wikipedia. Okay. Where I get all Continue. my information. I just wanted to clarify that. Continue. That, that, that's where I get my info too. Wikipedia. Yeah. Um, uh, so the article you come across is entitled unveiling the shadow realm, a scientific exploration into dimensions beyond perception Ooh, by Dr. Helena Sinclair. Sorry, I uh, preemptively asked that question. No worries. Do you need a little do premature? You, do you need some time? <laughs> no, I'm good. Okay. Um. So, she is a quantum physicist, uh, and that's like listed in her titles. Um. The enigmatic concept of a shadow realm, a theoretical space existing parallel to our reality, has long been relegated to the realms of myth and speculative fiction.
However, recent advancements in quantum physics have reignited scientific interest in exploring the potential existence of alternate dimensions that transcend our perceptual boundaries. This article delves into the theoretical framework surrounding the Shadow Realm and the ongoing effects to unveil its elusive secrets. The Shadow Realm is postulated to be a dimension that coexists with our own, concealed within the intricacies of quantum entanglement and the fabric of space-time. Driven by the curiosity to understand the uncharted territories of reality, scientists have hypothesized that this alternate realm may be accessed or influenced under specific conditions. The notion of shadows as interdimensional entities aligns with the conjecture that certain environmental factors may create rifts, allowing for the temporary convergence on the, of these realms. Key to this exploration is understanding the potential interplay between quantum entanglement and perceptual anomalies reported in areas associated with the shadow realm. Witnesses often describe shadowy figures and distorted shadows that defy conventional physics, suggesting a correlation between quantum phenomena and per the perceptual manifestations of interdimensional entities. Researchers are increasingly turning their attention to localized anomalies where the fabric of reality appears to unravel. Dr. Rachel Thornton, a quantum physicist, emphasizes the importance of studying these anomalies to discern patterns and explore the potential existence of interconnected dimensions. The scientific community's pursuit of empirical evidence to support or refute the shadow realm hypothesis involves a multifaceted approach incorporating quantum mechanics cosmology and advanced observational technologies as our understanding of quantum entanglement and the nature of space-time evolves the shadow realm remains a tantalizing frontier awaiting empirical scrutiny Dr. Sinclair's ongoing research aims to bridge the gap between theoretical conjecture and scientific exploration, shedding light on the shadows that linger at the edges of our comprehension. The journey to unravel the mysteries of the shadow realm represents a collaborative endeavor inviting physicists, astronomers, astronomers, I don't know what I said, uh, and multidisciplinary experts to collectively explore the uncharted territories of existence beyond our perceptual veil. The end. Um, what was that thing towards the end about, like, exploration? Like, it wasn't really anything specific. Um, it says Dr. Sinclair's it. ongoing research aims to bridge the gap between theoretical conjecture and scientific exploration, shedding light on the shadows that linger at the edges of our comprehension. That was the only uh, use of exploration in the in the okay. article. Yeah, that's I couldn't remember the word scientific. Um. <clears throat> Can I gather that this doctor chick is trying to figure out how to, like, pop into parallel realms sort of thing to figure out more of, like, what's going on over there? Uh, Sinclair? No. She's kind of just trying to, um, figure out if it actually exists. However... Oh. Another name was mentioned in this article. Thornton. Rachel Thornton. Thornton's trying to get her ass over there. Says a quantum physicist emphasizes the importance of studying these anomalies to discern patterns and explore the potential existence of interconnected dimensions. So according to just that section, it would imply that Dr. Thornton uh, A. Believes they exist wholeheartedly and B, wants to prove their existence and show that we're connected. Okay. Got it. <coughs> that article made my brain hurt. <laughs> What's the matter?
Why does your brain hurt? <coughs> Difficult article to wrap my head around, but it's fine. That's Got fair. It. Cool. It, was, it was very scientific. I'm not an academic. Neither am I. Aren't you a nurse? <laughs> I work with a group of paranormal investigators. Of course, I'm not a nurse. Jeez. Why would oh. you think she's a nurse? Or they are a nurse, sorry. Because oh, we're, we're getting hurt a lot lately. <laughs> I did nothing to fix that. I did nothing to patch you up. Yeah, I didn't think that axe was medical grade. <laughs> I mean, it probably could be. So next time sure you need didn't feel like you were a nurse while it was puncturing you know, my skin. Because I have a bottle of like Moon Energy wine Ooh. that Ooh. I'm convinced will sterilize the shit out of that. So <laughs> apparently, it's so supposed to make you feel amazing the next day. I don't know. How will we know unless we test it? That's kind of the plan. Oh, I got an empty cup over here. Where are you I'm guys right now? I'm drinking it at nine in the morning. Here, just have some of my coffee. Ugh. What? It's not as sweetened as mine. <laughs> Seven sugars. <laughs> Seventeen. More sugar than like coffee. Is the more accurate number. For him. <laughs> it's like a sludge going down his throat. <laughs> Definitely some kind of crystalline enhancement. There's just like a thick layer of sludge at the bottom of the cup. All right, where are you guys at the From diner? This part. <clears throat> uh, back at the. Hotel. I assume I'm sitting somewhere in the lodge. Uh, the lodge, like I said, the only coffee would be in your banquet hall. The diner actually like makes fresh coffee and stuff like that. So. It's up to you guys where you want to go. Yeah, I can spike my own coffee. It's fine. Okay. And there's just a creamer that's on the counter that just says Frankie's creamer. <laughs> it's Bailey's. It's, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so what are you guys wanting to do today? Because I'm going to go ahead and say right now, Frankie is not going to want to talk to Edmund. <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay. I think you guys want to talk to Dick for Brains. Um, Edmund. Me? No. Oh. <laughs> I'll, you, I'll figure out. I mean, yeah, doing. yeah. I, 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 know, I know. I know that. Anyway, if you guys want to talk to him personally, one, well, not me. But watching Oliver go in there would be freaking hilarious. I'm really good with people. Uh, they they like me. They get me. Like we're very I'm sure you like would very normal, very normal people time. interaction things. And I'll be there to make sure no one kills him. Oh, don't worry. Judith has my back. I thought it was Judy. Well, Judith is the term of respect. No one can call her Judy but me. We have a very personal relationship. Very. Not going to bring anything up know. about that gun. <laughs> that is currently safely hidden in my room. Uh, All right, so, so you're you're a pretty social per person. Like you, you get it. You, you know these people. Like you're dropping names I hadn't heard of from around here yet. Like who who are these people? There's this, this Edmund and there's this uh, the other Edmund one. is a hunter guide plot that works at the lodge at the hunting lodge. Sorry, can I just pause for a second? Quick question you sure for can. Oliver. Uh, on your character sheet in the game, you took a sharp improvement instead of taking a, another flake move. Oh. Are you gotcha. 
retracting no, um, that? I'm retracting that because I didn't I didn't remember doing that at all. So I just went with connect the dots. Okay, so you're going to take so, yeah, a flake move you, instead of your yeah, sharp. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Delete that. Okay. No worries. Perfect. Because yeah, I only added two to my. my yeah, sharp I mean. Morning. That's fine. I you also did not have connect the dots yet, so gotcha. you have connect the dots, see it all fits together, contrary and sneaky. That's correct. All right, continue. All right, you were you were telling me about Edmund there before my voice just got out of hand. Um, he's just um piece of work doesn't like our types and what we're doing here probably i don't know he doesn't like people snooping around for things that don't exist or exist and he's in denial you know whatever oh it all exists just yeah we're good there the he doesn't like people asking questions he's more that. interested in Pay me to take you around and shoot animals that are in the woods. Is that how he gets them in his traps so easily? Continue. Probably. Shooting them and dragging them into them? I mean, it seems pretty effective, wouldn't you say? He's a Mr. guide Boys? for hire for people that want to shoot animals and have fun and... Mm -hmm. Not get themselves killed because they don't know what they're doing anyway. Thank oh, it's half the fun right there. And what is it you think he knows? Or is um, newspaper article about weird shit happening at the mine. He was a part of the crew that went in there. Um. So I figured he'd know something about the, you know, more consistency with the stories of the red eyes and the ice and, you know, the whole thing we saw. He but, also hmm. regularly enters the forest more than most people in the town, so he might have seen something in there. <laughs> bingo, bingo. So what uh, was it that actually happened? with this mine um flickering lights uh sorry the same normal vague weird shit that we found out um it was a mill not a mine yeah, yeah. whatever same thing um flickering lights weird whispers power outages Talked it up to electrical malfunctions, but the reporter I talked to said they had just put in like power pools not long before that, so they shouldn't be having frequent electrical outages. Hmm. So, so it could affect direct line electronics as well. So stories didn't line up. I figured talking to the crew of the people that went in there. I could get stories to line up better, and then he was just an ass, so. Oh, it's okay. I'll talk to him. People. Oh, I'm sure like you will be fantastic. Because uh, he, he did mention that how he loves for um, people who aren't there for guides to take up his time and him lose money. So. Before we venture out anywhere again, everyone should also change their camera to take stills every 15 seconds. Nope. Doesn't a camera just take a whole bunch of stills? And then string them all yes, together? That is what a video, it doesn't like video auto is. save every... Somehow a video got corrupted, and videos are different formats stitching those pictures together. But a, uh, the picture she took did not get corrupted. So if, we, if our camera just takes a picture every few seconds, we'll either get a better idea of how that corruption works or get a picture of the creature. 
Oh, very good. I'll set it to that fast, uh, fast picture setting. Yeah, so I turn it on and it's just a strobe light. <laughs> And it stops after five minutes because you run out of storage. <laughs> if it can store a video. I don't think it would run out after five minutes. <laughs> Pictures, I believe, do actually take up a bit more storage per like frame than video. Yeah, but I, if you're talking I don't about know like if fifty true. frames like sixty frames per second on a video, even yeah. thirty. Yeah, it it would last a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's the flash that would kill it. <laughs> Was, so the battery would die. <laughs> yeah. I don't think these cameras have a flash. Oh. Oh, sounds like we got another people. Oh no! Hello, another oh, hey! People. It's Victor! He's Victor. So oh, where did uh, Wyatt get sent off to? Is Maxine with you? Not yet. Alright, good, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. They're not even on Skype yet, but cool. Just hold that pose. We're working on it. Hold on. She's coming. She's coming. I'm going to start coming up with nicknames for everyone. That's, that's what you're going to spend the next half hour doing? Yes. Okay. This is quite awkward when I have nothing to put my leg on. <laughs> <laughs> You doing that? You doing that for Maxine? <laughs> Piss off, buddy! All right. Um, I mean, I mean, you're free to try, but that means you're gonna have to compete with. <laughs> I don't think anyone can compete with that. Mm, yeah, I get that a lot. It's okay. You did very well. <laughs> you're, you're a very good-looking man, but oh no! Shh. So are you sitting wow. down or are you like standing just, somewhere right now? Doing... Just wow. I found a keg and I've got my one leg up upon it. <laughs> Good evening, Victor. Or er, morning. I moved the keg. <laughs> Dude, you are harshing my vibe. <clears throat> You are going to be Captain Morgan. Thank you. But my name is Oliver. I'm aware. Is she looking? Is she looking? Is she sure? Can't see her. <laughs> is Maxine here yet? Can we just get this over with? <laughs> uh, yeah. Who's older, Charlie can... or Victor? Uh, Victor, I Victor. think. Victor. Victor's like 62. Charlie is, yeah, and Charlie's right. mid 20s, mid late 20s. Okay. Victor's 39. I'm picturing all, uh, all of her posing, older, and Maxine is just completely you ignored. You shut it. <laughs> I'm there. Yeah. Voice sounds. Oh, I, I get it. I'll not be ignored. <laughs> you, what, what gun are Captain you picking Morgan, up? Captain Morgan, put it away. Put Judy away. <laughs> Judy, he doesn't have Stop Judy. It. I'm trying to look cool. <laughs> Wait, Judy yeah, is hidden away in my face. bedroom oh, right now. Christ. He does not have the gun. I forgot about that. <laughs> You've given up your gun to him twice. <gasps> Where's Judy? Oh no. You have tried to open too many doors with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you open doors? Including one that was unlocked. <laughs> Locked or unlocked, it is the, still the most effective way. All right. Cool. All right. The only person I haven't come up with a nickname for is Maxine. Uh, Columbo. Sexy. Maxima. Um. I'm curious what everyone's nickname is now. What's our, like, producer boss's name again? Tom? Um, Tom? So, he did not team. have a name, and then during Wyatt's interview, he's like, let's just act like it's any old day, Tom. I'm like, okay, he's Tom now. <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay. 
Just curious. Oh, here comes Maxine. Get ready. Hmm. Yes. I'm gonna start throwing like Ooh. pieces of dry cereal. He's posing for Maxine. Alan. Oh, <laughs> oh, good morning, Maxine. Of Didn't course. see you coming in. Well, hello You're there. Lo looking lovely this morning. Like still. Throwing continuing, Cheerios at Continuing to? The entire time he's talking. <laughs> There's a bunch like, of Cheerios she, hanging off the beard. Is she hairs. throwing Cheerios at you? Yes. Dude, I'm working here. <laughs> they are oh. throwing Cheerios at you, yes. Oh, right. I apologize. Oh, it's All not right. your fault. They're clearly heathen savages. You go through one you? too many foster homes, you get used to it. Okay, so where they where they want to appreciate food throwing. Mm. Well, it's actually a sign of great respect in their community. Oh. Food very scarce. So I, I meant the pronoun mix. They're, they're kind of they're kind of worshiping <laughs> me currently. So just to, just it's best to just ignore. Nobody asked you, Captain Morgan. Yeah, I didn't throw anything at you. Uh, okay. So. Oh, wait. <laughs> Wait, say that right. Keep up. Keep up. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> catch up. Catch up there, Nathan. All right. Let's go. Uh, Oliver, where are you going? Crazy. You want to come? All right. Cool. Frankie, um, where are you going? Where am I going? Um... Yes. Bye. <sighs> Um, what happened? Oh. Like, you, you guys left Skype. That's it. Oh, the cat. The cat. The cat, the cat left <laughs> Skype. Sure, blame the cat. Oh, too wait. beautiful for the cat. He's like, pay attention to me. All right. Oh, geez. I don't. Um... Okay, I'll let you think about, about that. These people. Maxine. But, uh... Yes. Where did you said you were wanting to go see Edmund? Is that still the case? Um, ma, 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 ma. yeah, because we were going. I'll come with to, you. I mean, yes, yes, I would like to go see uh, Edmund and see if he has any information about Doctor Redwood looking for Rachel. Okay, is anybody going with her, or is it just uh, her? Well, I suppose no one should let her go by herself. I'm um, going to stick by Oliver. Phew. All right, quickly. I'm going to need Judy. Is this Judy? a life or death situation? All well, right. it could be if I have Judy. <laughs> it, it could be if you have it. Correct. You know, I'll, I'll let you have I've... Judy if you need it. Oh, I need it to be a life or death situation for sure. Just you know, see. last time, last time I was more anti him carrying Judy, but yeah. it did come handy in our last little. So it's like I, you know, the thing is when we come across like whatever that was, and it could have been Edmund. Uh, so I bet no. So I better I better have it with me for sure. Go go get Judy. Intense violence is a crazy aphrodisiac. Um, I, I have Judy with me. Oh, perfect. Now, uh, ta ta, -ta you, to Ollie. When you need Judy, you can have it, which is not right now. I feel like it is right now, though. Dude, but it's not. Just right, you're embarrassing me. Do I have to roll up to manipulate person? All right, we're, we're, we're yeah, we're go for it. And because I have, oh, do I have this one? A minus two to your. I have, <laughs> yeah. All right, I get to actually use sharp instead of cool. Ooh, nine, ten, eleven to manipulate person. So that means, um. If they do what you ask, they mark an experience and get plus one forward. 
So if you do as Oliver says, you get an experience and you get a plus one to a future roll. I lied to him. The gun isn't on me, so he's not getting it. <laughs> I mean, so you can still get it. Yeah, you can yeah, still, still get it. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so no experience, no forward. I get an experience for that then? No. It'd be so an nobody... Nobody gets anything. Okay, so when we try, okay, so how does that work exactly? It's like well, we're gonna go unarmed then, and I'm like, probably I'm not. Like tell the most common <laughs> role in this game is Oliver trying to get his gun. <laughs> okay, so if if uh, if he won't allow, I'm just trying to understand them. DM. Yeah. Deeper. It's like. If they're not yeah. going to... Go ahead. So, no, for I'm another like, hunter... No, I, I agree. One of us should get an experience for that. For a hunter, on a 10+, yeah. plus, if they do yeah. what you ask, they mark an experience and get plus one forward. So, they have the choice to do what you a do what the person asks and get a benefit. On a 7 and to 9, just... they just mark an experience. On a miss, that's when you would mark experience, and they mark experience if they decide not to do what you ask. Okay, so you still have freedom of choice, basically. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like, I think that's actually a really good system in this game, because yeah. when we rolled in the other games to like persuade or deceive or whatever, yeah. um, that would like force people to do it, and they had to do it. But in here, they have a choice. There's a benefit to them doing it or not doing it, depending on what's rolled. But they still can choose whether they want to do it or not. The only issue I have with that is that if you roll good and they don't do anything, you get nothing for it. Yeah, that's I might as well not roll at all. Exactly. Right. That's the downside. That is the downside, yeah. But okay. Yeah, but if we weren't going through a town and he did that same roll, if we were just in the forest and nothing was around, I would have given him the gun. No, you wouldn't have because you didn't have it with you. Well, I'm going to have it with me if we're going out into the forest. Okay. Ah, I see what you're saying. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, uh, sense, Judith is yeah. indisposed currently. Uh, are you carrying? I'm. I'm actually wondering whether I sh should. So I will say one thing. Um, uh -huh. If you have the advanced version of this, they are forced to do what you ask. They have to roll act under pressure to resist. Gotcha. On a 12 plus. So with his, I still would have had the option. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's all right. I am not completely harmless. I, I feel like Judith. that's an advance that Oliver will take. Hey, Oliver's so I, <laughs> I do have, I do have a gun mad, but it's like, I don't know whether keeper it's what? <laughs> he likes his name to be Keeper. Oh, sorry. Keeper. Uh, or Keeper. He also likes Creeper. Creeper, Keeper. Creeper. It's, it's, the, like, it's the Keeper. You have a gun. Yeah, creeper. I know. You get it with... No, no, no. I realize yeah. that, but I just... It's like, I don't know whether... I don't know whether I would give it to him, though. You wouldn't give it to him. Why oh, would you? no, no, no. Oh, you know what? Yeah, do not... Like, I don't cheat on Judy. Give the gun to a crazy person. Okay. <laughs> But it's like, I, it's, okay, yeah. You're going to talk to a person. Why do you need a gun? Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, just because of what see, happened last time. I could like, potentially oh, see you not even taking the gun with you. And you'd Yeah, like be I had very, it locked up in the safe. And you'd be very surprised how much more people are willing to speak to you when you point a gun at them. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm, that's not that what, very no, well. no, 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 that's not, Sorry, that's not, Victor, not what Oliver. I wanted to. Yeah, that's not what I wanted to do. It's just after our last. Well, I don't want to do it either. Episode, but if they're not talking, I mean. Like no, 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 no. From the so you're saying that you like think Charlie? that going to talk to. Edna. Well, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, didn't we'll you talk. say that he was a little aggressive? So it's like that's. Yeah, I'm. Just, I don't know. I'm just. Dick. So, from the I'm opinion of Charlie, true, true. only himself and Victor should have their guns when we're going through the town. 
He's just an ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. I get. I'm just like I said. I'm just, I'm a little shaken over what happened, and so it's like I'm just <laughs> yes. Oh, worry not. And I grab her by the chin. Do not be shaken. By the chin. Yes. It's like that's seems... okay. <clears throat> she will be okay with me. Trust me. I think I think I'm fine. I think I'm fine. But it's just you I'm, sure like, are. All right. <laughs> cool your jets there, Paco. Mm. All right. Let's go see Edmund. You can yes, come. Let's. If you want to come with me, I feel sure. That's great. I'm sure we can get something out of him. As I'm walking away, she said yes. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, this is going to be a long day. Girl. Pass my coffee, Maxine. Here, this might help. Thank you. Okay. So what's everybody else doing? For the reference, it's like half Bailey's. <laughs> it's like, it's perfect. The morning, morning wake up juice. <laughs> um. Uh, I don't so... know if there's a point going to talk to the rest of the mill crew that went in there or not. Oh, that's actually one thing I don't have on, on the map. What? The sheriff's office. The mill? Oh. No, the mill I, I already added because I saw I forgot that, but I don't have a sheriff's office. So I'll add that right hey, now. Hey, I don't think... We haven't been... Have we been to Evans Antiquities yet? No. Okay. And... Yeah, we haven't been to see police at all. I don't know. Is Frankie... Is Frankie, like... I feel like they wouldn't be... Super great with the police, or no? I don't know, are you... Yeah. Depends on how the police are. What's yeah. The... Yeah. If Frankie, um, or if anyone's going to the police, Victor should probably go with them. And I don't mind going to see police either, because that was that's part of my thing too. It's like I'm I'm okay with the law. It's like as long as Frankie has had a lot of experience like, with the law, but I don't know if they're good with the law. Yeah. But that's that's in my in my uh people that I'm comfortable with is is people like Oliver and yep. police and what was the that's other pretty one? pretty much everybody. <laughs> I think the morgue. Do we have a morgue? Yes. No, there wouldn't be a morgue in this town, would there? Uh, there would be a mortician at the sheriff's office and that's it. Yeah. Oh, sweet. So, yeah. Those are, those yeah. are my peeps. So, from me um, and Victor's standpoint, I think one of us should always be with Oliver. And uh, one of us should go with them to the police at least the first time. And definitely give him his gun back. No. Hmm? I don't think that was one of them. But yes, I, Oliver, are we going to go see Edmund? Do you want to come with me to see Edmund? Well, sure. Sure. Okay. I, I think I think that would be great. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. What's the rest of the people doing? What's um, where's Frankie going? Frankie goes to Hollywood. <gasps> I guess people want the cops' opinion. I can try and just go. <coughs> sorry. You should be sorry. Okay, so if if oh, Frankie's wait, going know. to the cops, I'll go with her. If she wants them. Them wants. That them, wants. Them, wants. Uh, them would want. <laughs> them, them would, would want. want. <laughs> them they would want. Perfect. Oh. <laughs> them and you know, Them and did, would go. You did your best. Uh, I'm proud of you for trying. Get you, that's a rough one, no matter who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Going to see the police. It'll no, get... them who wants. I know, I know who you're talking about. I know who you're talking about. I'm just trying to them wants. 
Sure. All I, right. I mean, company would be great to make sure I don't get the shit kicked out of me. I don't. Well, I don't think the cops will do that. And it's a small no. town. I don't know what cops out here do. You might want to leave your bloody axe behind. <laughs> He's, they've cleaned it. It was an accident. <laughs> You're better I've never seen it in all of my years in Boston. I've never seen them beat down a, a white girl. Okay. So I'm not a girl. But thank you. Oh, Over, you and you and I are gonna need to have a talk about all your right. time in Boston. Okay. We're moving moving on from here. <laughs> okay. So who do you want to do? Do you want to do Frankie and? Uh, it's up to you guys. Who wants to go first? Hey, consent, please. Sorry. What? <laughs> which Low which one? Fruit, I had to. Oliver understood. Uh, where... yeah, I get it now too. But I'm just. <laughs> okay, guys. Um. Going off the rails. Yeah, a little so... bit. I feel like I'm. Okay, so which which place do we want to go first? It's like I don't care. Call it keeper. Uh, let's go to um, Edmund first. All right. Okay. You better hold my so hand just in the... case. You know, you ne you never know. Uh, no, I no, I think no. no it's okay. Or, it's I think okay. I'm okay. okay. I'm okay. Right. I'm fine. No, it's Oliver. If it's... you're worried, I can hold your hand. Ah! Where'd you <laughs> come from? <laughs> he said he was coming with us. So oh, why? Okay. No, 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 it's cool. Yeah, come along, Charlie. Okay. 